Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cecilia Campillo. I am program manager for the TCE program at El Pueblo Clinic. This is another in a series of programs that we're presenting to the public. Um, a story on TCE. For those that may or may not know, TCE is an industrial solvent that harmed the health of people living on the south side of Tucson. Uh, it's a problem that has, uh, that occurred uh, in the mid 40s and continues even today. The clinic at El Pueblo, located at 101 West Irvington Road, is, is addressing those health care needs for people that uh, fall under certain criteria to come into the program and receive care, doctor's care, receive their pharmacy, and specialty clinic needs through funding that the city and the state has provided to the clinic. We have very special guests today. We have Mr. Hector Morales, Executive Director of El Pueblo Clinic, and we have uh, Alfred Di Cochea. Uh, he's the President of the El Pueblo Clinic Board of Directors. I'm very pleased that uh, you gentlemen are here, to, here today visiting and talking to us about your experiences uh, regarding uh, TCE and uh, the clinic's work in general. Good afternoon, Hector, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having and us And we here, will be Sophia. back with uh, Mr. Di Cochea. Um, Hector, uh, Mr. Morales, I would like for you to kind of relate a story to the public uh, regarding your experience, uh, work, having worked at El Pueblo Clinic now for the last two years, and give us a story on TCE. And Well, let me just preface that part of my comment, Cecilia, with uh, just stating that uh, my family and I have lived in that area for many, many years. Uh, mm -hmm. Our children went to school in the Sunnyside School District, so we have a very personal interest in the problems uh, that are caused by trichloroethylene, TCE. Mm -hmm. uh, the clinic, El Pueblo Clinic, uh, as you said, situated at 101 West Servington, is in the El Pueblo Neighborhood Center complex. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the important programs that we conduct, among others, is the TCE program Mm -hmm. aimed at uh, providing health care, primary outpatient health care, mm -hmm. to victims of the TCE contamination. That contamination took place uh, over the years uh, from around uh, World War II years uh, through 1981 when the city discovered that about 18 of their water wells were contaminated with TCE. Mm -hmm. And the families in, uh, living in the area, going to children going to school in the area or people working in that area had been drinking the contaminated water for years. Mm -hmm. After the city closed the water wells, uh, the, uh, the individuals who had uh, been affected by the TC contamination uh, did not have any recourse to any health care, especially those that did not have uh, enough uh, income to purchase insurance. So uh, the state and the county about uh, six years ago, mm -hmm. decided to uh, fund a small TCE program mm -hmm. and uh, give the uh, authorization or the, the uh, mission to the uh, El Pueblo Clinic to conduct the TCE program to benefit those, those patients, to provide outpatient health care. Over the years, over the past five, six years, there have been approximately 850 patients that have gone through the clinic process, and of those 850, uh, of course, some of them have passed on, uh, and uh, we have about close to 300 active patients at the present time, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we have also second and even into the third generation of, of patients because one of the uh, traits of uh, or the marks of TCE is that it can affect uh, genetically from one generation to another, and uh, there's still a lot of research that needs to be done to find out. Uh, what are the actual effects of TCE, but we do know from the pattern that we see in, in, in the patients and mm -hmm. the, the medical uh, staff that we have that see with the patients in, uh, almost on a daily basis uh, that uh, uh, illnesses such as diabetes, lupus, uh, neurological disorders, uh, brain tumors, mm -hmm. um, many, many uh, illnesses are aggravated or uh, made worse by, by TCE. 
And especially over the years, as, as people age, the manifestations of the TC contamination or the toxic effects will, will uh, appear in the patient. So while there may be young people who were employed or going to school at the time that the, the contamination took place, they may not uh, have felt the effects of that until later on in life. So we have mm -hmm. a growing and uh, older population that is growing and, and uh, some of those older uh, victims of TCE are now finding that they have been affected by, by the toxic uh, contamination. Right, and you made a, a very uh, interesting point. A small program for an enormous uh, problem uh, health-wise. Um, would you uh, say that uh, money has been limited to the work that can be done to provide health care for the people that are currently being seen? Well, the funds that we do receive and that we have received over the past five years uh, are average about $250,000 from uh, the uh, county and $250,000 from the state, a total, mm -hmm. of a total of half a million dollar budget per year. And um, this is definitely not enough money to provide health care to the type of population and the type of illnesses that I described a, a minute ago. Uh, it's a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes the public uh, hears reports of, for example, EPA, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, has spent uh, $26 million plus, still going on, to clean up the ground uh, water and the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, and people assume, well, that's $26 million, that some of it must be going to help the patients. The fact is that zero uh, amount of that, uh, that 26 million plus that is spent to clean up uh, the groundwater and the soil has been uh, used for patient care because it's mm -hmm. against federal law. Mm -hmm. So that's why the state and the county have uh, stepped in to provide funding, but, but the amount that they provide, as I say, is, is in, uh, it's welcome, but it is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not discharge pa uh, TCE patients. And we had to make that point quite, quite forcefully with the state and the county uh, because they expected us to treat patients for maybe two or three visits and then send them on their way, discharge them, mm -hmm. that they would be uh, uh, free of the contamination. And but in it, fact, that has just been the opposite because of the way. continued care that they're requiring. Is it, this it's correct? a chronic mm -hmm. uh, illness uh, result from TCE. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't end. Mm -hmm. It keeps on going through the lifetime of the patient. So we have active patients and we have inactive patients. Mm -hmm. uh, those patients that move away or that uh, get insurance or find health care elsewhere or that die. Uh, but of the active patients that we have, as I said, close to 300 presently, mm -hmm. uh, the needs that they have for specialty uh, referrals, uh, the 250,000 from the city, I mean from the state and from the county uh, are, are simply not enough. I mentioned the city, and I should say that the city of Tucson provides us the space, <coughs> the building, the uh, maintenance, the utilities, the parking, the security. So the city makes a sizable contribution in kind uh, services, whereas the state and the county provide us uh, the cash for, for the actual uh, budget of the clinic. Right. And uh, you're hoping, as, as director of the clinic, uh, to someday request federal funding, I suppose, for, for continued care. Uh, federal funds, as I understand, are not part of the program. Exactly. We have submitted an application for some $355,000 mm -hmm. of federal funding, but that's kind of iffy. We, we, we don't have any assurances that that will be awarded. But as I mentioned, EPA under federal law cannot spend any of its money for health care of mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. only on cleanup. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there perhaps in a future program that you may have uh, there should be a discussion of, of how uh, the, uh, what they're called PERPs or the uh, potentially responsible parties mm -hmm. uh, that have contributed to the contamination, how they could possibly provide funds mm -hmm. for health care. One, one small qu quick example, the Air Force the <coughs> contributed to the contamination of the Tucson Airport area. Uh, they want to prov put up some $35 million and then pull out of any agreement to uh, provide any more funds to clean up mm -hmm. the area. They, they figure $35 million should buy them this out. This is lately and Very recently. Uh -huh. But 
not one dollar of that $35 million will be used for patient care. Mm -hmm. It will all go to cleanup. Mm -hmm. And I think the public needs to understand that uh, there has to be uh, a distinction made and then an effort made to, to, for example, tell the Air Force, if you're going to put up $35 million for cleanup of the ground, water, and soil, then you could put up uh, maybe not $35 million, but at least a significant amount of money to help those victims mm -hmm. that uh, are still living and suffering mm -hmm. in, in the area. Right. And uh, to do otherwise, to see that, just to be very blunt about it, if, if we don't have the potentially responsible parties addressing that need of health care for the victims, what we then have to uh, deduce from that is that uh, they don't care about uh, the situation which really amounts to uh, mm -hmm. environmental racism. Mm -hmm. Because as we know, the uh, majority population in the area that we serve, mm -hmm. south of 22nd Street and west of uh, Alvern and Palo Verde and uh, east of Santa Cruz River and down to the Hughes uh, Raytheon plant, Mm -hmm. on the south side, the majority population there is Hispanic. And okay. there's, there's also other minority population, mm -hmm. and it's a low-income population, mm -hmm. uh, underemployed in, for the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, to not pay attention to the health needs of, of, of the population there is to uh, invite the charge of environmental racism. Mm -hmm. I've uh, always um, kind of like um, added uh, economic racism as well. <clears throat> as you know, our economy on the south side is, is poor, mm -hmm. is very poor and needs a lot of help. Um, and not only uh, in industrial that we have too much of already, but we need uh, commercial and a lot of other economic uh, employment uh, work uh, for, the, for the people on the south side. So I'd like to kind of slash that with uh, uh, environmental racism um, slash uh, economic racism. Would you agree with that? I, I definitely would because a as we know, the majority of the patients that come in our door at the clinic, and not just the TCE patients, but mm -hmm. the uh, patients that have a, a, an urgent health need or something that needs attention now, uh, for the most part are either unemployed or underemployed uh, single mothers, heads of household with children, and um, while we see some efforts being made to try to provide employment, I don't see a, a, uh, an aggressive community effort to bring uh, the needed jobs and businesses to the south side mm -hmm. that would help uh, that part of the population. What, what uh, changes would you like to see, and I'm going to leave it at that, uh, and come back to you, uh, Mr. Morales, for an answer to that question. Uh, what would you do to change some of those things, or what would you recommend? What would your recommendation recommendations be to change some of those economic needs, some of that environmental racism that uh, constantly batters the South Side? We'll turn to Mr. Dicochea and, and welcome him, Alfred. Thank you for coming to the program today. Thank you, Cecilia. And as president of the board. Um, you face many decisions, I'm sure, in not only the aspect where TCE is concerned, but in many other aspects to do with the clinic. As you know, you know the clinic has been there for 25 plus years giving service, and uh, that component on, of TCE was added five years ago to meet the needs of the healthcare for people that were ex exposed. How have you dealt with those issues, and uh, can you please tell us? As the uh, president of the Board of Directors for the uh, clinic, uh, I would first like to um, express my appreciation for being on, on the show uh, with you as a host, as a hostess, and with our director, Mr. Uh, Morales, who I've known for um, many, many years, and also the other seven members of the, of the Board of Directors mm -hmm. uh, who have been volunteers and have been putting in numerous hours in terms of trying to uh, assist in resolving the problem. I think also beyond that, I would like to give some appreciation and thanks to the Health Advisory Board, uh, which has been very supportive of the efforts in terms of seeking funding and uh, trying to uh, address and maintain in the eyes of the public the fact that there is a problem still and the problem is going to be there tomorrow. Uh, possibly for many years. Uh, and as indicated by uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Morales, is that it's not a problem that's going to go away uh, uh, soon. 
uh, the, the whole area of, of health, the whole area in terms of uh, living, in terms of longevity is going to be there. Most recently there's been articles in the paper about uh, numerous persons that have had you know, cancer or uh, illnesses related to TCE, even though medically it's been said that it is very hard to document a direct link. I uh, am, uh, was also born on the south side. I was born in South Tucson. It was just outside the plume of the TC contamination area. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that involvement and because of being a native Tucsonian, uh, I volunteered to be on the board. I've been on the board for uh, going a little bit over two years. I, have, uh, I will be president of the board for two years coming this uh, July. When I took over as the president, there were uh, numerous obstacles. Uh, two primary obstacles. One was funding and this, the securing of those dollars to ensure the continuation of the program. And secondly, it was getting a, uh, or having a board of directors work together cohesively in terms of promoting the fact that there is a health problem. And it, it even goes beyond the whole area of TCE in terms of as we expand the global vision in terms of, or the global problem in terms of healthcare, uh, besides the problems of underserving the area in terms of TCE uh, clients, there is other areas in terms of health. Uh, as you indicated, and, uh, and as Mr. Morales indicated, the, the whole issue of uh, the lack of justice or the, or the appearance of the lack of justice or environmental racism, uh, whether that exists or not, is that what does exist is, is that there's a problem. And that problem always exists in terms of underdeveloped areas. Uh, as you mentioned, the, the area of the economy, uh, the area in terms of persons making a, a livable wage, all of those things interact. Even to carry it beyond that, it goes into the area of, ed of education, it goes into the area of housing, um, it goes into the area of, ma of manpower, and it goes basically, I think, to the, the core in terms of uh, this country, in terms of what we call democracy. If democracy is going to exist, and that we're going to make democracy a success in this world, and this world needs it right now, is that democracy starts at home, and we are at home here, and with with the cooperation of the of the clinic board, the advisory board members, the numerous volunteers that we have, and the tremendous staff that we have that has yes, worked absolutely. numerous of, of hours. Mm -hmm and not received, and at least in my opinion, and I think it's shared by other persons, um, good compensation mm -hmm. and fringe benefits. We are working in terms of trying to rectify that. That's what We are trying to, uh, to keep this in mind, and uh, maybe before uh, the, the next question is posed, just let me uh, address very briefly uh, one of the points that uh, Mr. Morales made in terms of the Department of uh, of defense or, or more specifically the Air Force. We know that for a fact uh, the TCE problem slash medical uh, services is going to be needed for a long time. Cleaning up the soil and the contamination is one of the areas that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need to be concerned about is uh, will the lives of people uh, be somewhat better handled and prevent, and hopefully the prevention of death be postponed for a later time. Uh, to that goal, I think all of us have been committed to making this program successful. And I'll stop there, and then I'll, I'll add some other things. That's and, and may I thank you on behalf of the community because it's uh, people that are interested in the lives of others that are in need. Uh, that you uh, bring strength to the community. Your volunteering uh, services and the volunteering services of all the people that support El Pueblo Clinic uh, is to be commended. It's great and uh, that's what keeps uh, El Pueblo Clinic uh, you know, as, as uh, strong as uh, it is. And, um, and I'm going back to Mr. Morales and we had uh, been talking about 
um, how you would change some of the th the needs or what recommendations you mean. And the reason is because you've been a leader in in the community for many many years, and especially in the political arena where uh, you know best. But Hector, how are we going to change some of those things in economics as far as uh, the South Side is concerned? Well, Cecilia, I was involved in, in uh, community activism, political activities for, for many years before I left to go work in Washington and then in Phoenix. But upon returning a couple of years back uh, to go to work at, at El Pueblo, uh, the thought struck me that Things haven't changed. I was away for maybe uh, 12, 14 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I saw that the same uh, economic depression exists on the south side, and I see some of the older generation, especially in the, in the uh, Hispanic community, have uh, dropped out of the activism business, mm -hmm. and fortunately there are some new young people who are interested in, in continuing the struggle for economic justice and equality. Uh, but I think it, it requires a uh, new approach with the mayor and council, with the board of supervisors, with the state legislature and state government to bring about the change that, that's required to bring those jobs and, uh, and the businesses that are required and the changes that need to be made on the south, south side of town. It, um, I think we can compare the south side to other parts of town and see where, where the money is being placed. Mm -hmm. uh, the money that needs to be placed in the south side uh, in comparison to the, to the areas in other parts of town where the money is being placed. Mm -hmm. it, there, there's, there's really no comparison to speak of in, in that mm -hmm. sense. We can see that, that the south side has been shorted mm -hmm. on uh, many activities. Uh, that would bring about jobs and uh, a better life for, for the people on the south side. I think young, young people need to, to deal with that mm -hmm. situation. Unfortunately, many of them leave town or leave the area to go find uh, their employment elsewhere, and that's mm -hmm. natural. But I think we need to take another hard look at what, uh, what uh, the community can do on the south side. A good point of view. And uh, I guess while all those, uh, that, those weaknesses that have been imposed uh, or given to the South Side. Um, that what was what created a lot of the problems having to do with TCE at that time. It was the easiest place uh, to uh, to uh, uh, have the um, industrial community, and it was the place where there was less resistance from people that uh, were imposed with a uh, water contamination. But at the clinic, we continue to struggle to make lives better for the, for the people that come in and who claim their lives have been impacted. In fact, um, not only has it impacted them um, physically or physiologically, but psychologically as well. Most definitely. I think we need to point out that at, at Pueblo Clinic, we do not turn anyone away uh, mm -hmm. who has a, a uh, medical need. Mm -hmm. We want to see that person, and if we need to refer that person elsewhere for more in-depth treatment, we will do so. But uh, we need to keep that, the doors open of El Pueblo Clinic mm -hmm. uh, for the public of the south side of, of the community and to provide that health care. TCE, as I said, is one of our important programs, but it's not the only program. Right. We have uh, other activities that we conduct, kids care, premium sharing. Uh, United Way helps us out with some of the uh, needs of the Notch Group patients. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, the patients that are just above the, the poverty level mm -hmm. who still don't have enough recourses, uh, finances, to, mm -hmm. to take care of their, their health needs. All access uh, plans included? All the access plans, mm -hmm. HMOs. The we Well have contracts Woman? With, mm -hmm. with the Well Woman program is a very important program. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a growing number of patients in that program. So there's a, a variety of activities at the clinic. Mm -hmm. And we have a good staff, good medical staff, good support staff, mm -hmm. and we invite the public to come to, to the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, the city provides us the space. Uh, they just en enlarged our building uh, for the clinic, and uh, we have uh, what I would consider a modern, up-to-date clinic, and it's being improved upon constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that some of the 
businesses in town. And the expansion? Well, the expansion. Uh, me, the expansion. Exactly. It's, uh, we have more space, more exam rooms. Mm -hmm. We hope to bring on more medical staff mm -hmm. uh, to take care of our growing patient uh, volume. But I, I would invite the business community especially to come in and see the clinic. And, uh, and this is a pitch. Where Clearly can, provide some resources to the clinic. With that in mind, where can they contact you, Mr. Morales? Uh, At, uh, our, our phone number is 573-0096 at, at Pueblo Clinic, mm -hmm. and they can contact me or contact you as the uh, TC program manager, the uh, plan, uh, program operations manager. Uh, Dr. Shauna McIsaac is our medical director. You can contact her. But uh, we need community support. We need community understanding of uh, the TC program and the other programs that we conduct there at the clinic. Very important. And I want to thank you again for being on this program, uh, Mr. Dicochea. Uh, I hope that you can come back and visit with us again and give us more of your uh, point of view uh, about the clinic, about the work you're doing. And again, we want to thank you for the work you're doing for the clinic. Thank you. Mr. Morales, thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we will be back next week with another series of programs uh, from El Pueblo Clinic and the TCE program. Thank you.